if you look at the Titanic data, which is pre-installed, so you don't have to do anything, it's a complicated one. Not too complicated and not too large, but it's not just a row of numbers. It's not just, um, you know, 100 numbers. There are some numbers. There are names, like factors, text, different types of data. So it's more complicated. I mean, what, what are you supposed to do? Well, the standard approach is we begin by looking at the structure. Because that tells us, you know, it's a table, it has four dimensions, the sizes of them, they're not numbers, they're characters. So, you know, we have a rough idea. We have a better idea. And we even have the names. So otherwise I'd typically go dim names Titanic to get that they're called class sex age survived. Then I'd try to look at part of the data. You know, just go Titanic male. But that doesn't work. Now we looked at how you can, we have the four slots, if you use the square brackets, we can kind of um, access that, you know, the, the male data, sex is equal to male data, that way. But I prefer being, a, you know, given that we have the name, I would have thought I'd be able to use it. So then I wanted to look at the table because it says it's a table. I'm more used to using data frames. So okay, it is a different cross tabulation, blah, 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 as data frame. Hmm. So if you just go data frame Titanic, that converts from a table to a data frame. I just use the standard way, go into Google and typed in table to our data frame in R or something along those lines. Because R is a very popular, widely used system. So there are loads of blogs, there's lots of help out there which makes it far easier to find solutions because many other people have been stuck on that problem and they found solutions. Now while I prefer the data frame because that's very easy, I find it more readable. You know, it, the information was here. But you know, you have to read a bit there. Oh, survived is no. It's, this is nice and clean. Now I wanted, and the main core of this, what we're gonna to do today is to use the dplyr package. Now I already have it installed, dplyr, just going to install, type in dplyr, install, you're done. And then do library dplyr to load it up. Now we get to show off, showcase some of the magic that R can do. Firstly, I'm gonna store the Titanic data, which is converted to a data frame, into DF Titanic. Now, 
Now I'm going to use Deeplar, which gives me access to a range of functions. So I just take my data frame, I pipe it, so that's percentage greater than percent, into a range. And I'm going to say frequency frequency like what which is one of the columns so I just want to sort the data on the basis of the value in the frequency but actually I wanted it with the highest number on top to do that I use the descend DSC command around the frequency. So now I have the biggest number on top. If you just do question mark or range you can access the help for that and find out you know uh, what the options are for it. So that's kind of interesting mm. but what if I just pick the adults. Uh, I just want to look at the difference between how men did compared to women. I'm, I, I'm not going to be looking at the kids. So I just use Deeplier lets me use the filter command and I just say I want age is equal to adult. Ta da! See now there's no child data anymore. Now Deeplier does not actually change your data. So DF Titanic is still untouched. It's just that's what it's showing me. And I could store that into another variable if I wanted. Now we go for a bit of wow. Oh yeah, I thought I'd chuck in a bit of rhyme there. Don't think it worked. Now I'm going to use spread, which is a bit of a magical command. Here it goes. Now look at this, and it's nice. I no longer have any children data, I have them ordered. With the spread command, I can spread the survived row. You know, I have a survived. So it basically unbundles it. I don't want to have to go uh, crew male adult who survived who didn't survive what about the crew male adult who did survive oh then you have to now search through this entire table trying to find crew male yeah I mean it's hassle with the spread command I've removed the survived. Now I have a column called yes and no. And I've put in the frequency, like those numbers, into the appropriate column. So that just makes it far more clean. I can go first class male adult, 57 survived, 118 didn't. Okay, while first class female, 140 survived, while only 4 didn't. Likewise for second class. So, you know, I'm getting the story is coming out from all the, all the numbers there. Which is a pretty l magical, I think, um, command. I, I hadn't come across that. All I had to do was tell it, you know unbundle this and it gets better I can also 
use the mutate command. With that, I actually create a new column. And in this case, I want total to be yes plus no. So total to be the total number of first class male adult. And, and it's done it. Total is, I've added them up for each of them. So, you know, if we looked at our original data and I wanted to know, okay, how many, um, if I looked up first class male, like the data was all over the place. Let's go back up here again. So I could look up first class male. Oh, this is age, child survived, no. Okay, so I want adult survived, first class male is 57. I go, okay, how many didn't survive? Oh, uh, I'll have to, where is that? Uh, adult didn't survive, first class male, 118. So that data's up here, the other one is over here. And how many were there in total? So all the bits of information that I'd like, I put there. And I can create new things. I can mutate and put on another, put in another column, maybe work out what the percentage of people who survived were. And then I could sort that. So playing around with your data you're able to organize it and put it in a really neat, nice format. So that's one of the powerful, magical, wow capabilities of R. Next, I want to have a period of regular posts. So every Friday, going through the WOW features of R. We saw how you can just install this. Dplyr is one of the great packages within R. So you can watch videos of people doing, oh, I can do this, I can do that. But I'd recommend just install it look around the data sets and see if there's anything you find interesting and then play around with it. Till next week. Remember to subscribe in order to be updated when new content is added. Thanks.